Good morning, afternoon, evening as the case may be in your part of the world. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Zen Archer. I tell you, it's hard to find a place to vlog out here this morning. It just seems like no matter where I go, it just doesn't work out. I go in the back and there's cicadas and music playing next door. And then there's, oh, I just, mosquitoes up the wazoo. So... I thought maybe we just take a little walk out here. You can hear a cicada in the trees. It's that season again. One of my favorite bloggers here on YouTube, uh, I found because of uh, Atara 916. Uh, many of you remember her. Uh, her and I were out for a walk and we saw a huge wasp, as big as my thumb, attacking a cicada. And uh, we decided to look on YouTube and see if we can figure out what that was all about and this guy does his videos are, are documentary in a documentary style and uh, he was explaining about cicada killer wasps and I'll put a link if I can remember where the video is at so you guys can see it too but it's a wasp that specifically attacks cicada takes the cicada and flies it to its nest a burrow in the ground and uh, puts it in there and then lays its eggs on it then those eggs, when they hatch, use that cicada as food while they develop. Anyway, it's a random thought. That's not really what I would talk to you about today. I just watched, you remember I told you about the Jerry Seinfeld show, the, uh, the um, comedians in cars with coffee? Well, he just had Chris Rock on, and, and during that, that show, he was mentioning that if you gave a caveman a lighter, if you gave him technology, that caveman would rule the world. So then that led to more of that type of conversation, and uh, I got to thinking about uh, access to technology and those people who have it and those people who don't. And in the process of investigating that, uh, I found some interesting things that I wanted to share with you. One of those interesting things is a, a woman by the name of Susan Crawford who wrote a book called um, a Captive Audience. Now Susan Crawford is a woman who was during the Obama's uh, um, transition into presidency. She was a special advisor on technology, <coughs> innovation, internet, she's worked with the FCC, so on and so forth, and, and she wrote this book, and it really started to make me think um, about the technology that we have today. Everybody's walking around with smartphones. Uh, I happen to know that something like 35% of the people that are watching this video are watching it on a mobile device, which is one of the reasons that now I try to keep the videos a little bit shorter than I used to because uh, people on mobile devices don't have 20 minutes to sit in, in a McDonald's and watch my videos. Uh, they want to see a lot of other videos or eating. At any rate, um, so her contention is, and, and I agree with it, is that uh, the internet today is, is not a luxury item anymore. At one time it might have been, but today it's not. It's as important as the electricity in your house. It's as important as the communication that you used to get through your cell phone. It's as important as your running water and your flushing toilets. The internet is that important to, to people in the United States. And not only uh, is it important uh, just because they have information at their fingertips, which gives them a, a, a step up, but um, it's important because you can't function in in any kind of a reasonable way in society today if you're not using the internet in some way. If you want to put in a job application, you need the internet to do that in most cases. If uh, an employer is going to hire you, he's going to look and find out about you through your internet presence. He's going to look at your Facebook and stuff like that. So you might want to be careful what you put up there. But it's become a utility item. And yet, um, Back in, in the uh, early 2000s, uh, even, there were laws that were being passed, and, and much much farther back, ma bells and monopolies were broke up um, and forced to put copper wiring 
to more rural places that didn't have telephone because at that time the telephone as a communication device was just as important as the radio is today. You, you needed to be able to communicate with people. So today those laws are um, still in place and telephone companies that, that have that type of service um, are still required to do certain things uh, but they're, they're with the advent of VoIP services, voice over IP um, they're moving into the into the internet and, and using the the net in order to make phone calls and stuff like that, think Skype and so they're dropping some of their uh, most of their copper wire service and in doing so they're putting a significant number of Americans at a disadvantage because while the copper wires were regulated and there had to be competition that's why they broke up the Ma Bells and stuff to get rid of the monopolies there had to be competition in order to drive prices lower while that was true with table with telephone companies that's not true on the internet uh, the internet is full of monopolies and companies like Time Warner and, and Verizon and AT&T have lobbyists you know in Washington that are fighting to make sure that it doesn't get regulated so they're charging you high prices for what is really substandard uh, internet services to be honest with you if you go to uh, places, uh, other countries, China for instance, in, in Seoul, um, you can get a 500 megabyte download, 500 megabyte per second download uh, type of service for roughly what would be equivalent to $30 in the United States. So what you pay $200 or better for, and you're lucky if you there are places in the United States where you download service, uh, download service. Um, however that's an interesting thing I'm going to come back to so fiber optics is in in places like China and Japan uh, particularly uh, upload download speeds are unbelievable compared to us because we're getting substandard service and paying top dollar for it but there are places in the United States for instance uh, Lafayette uh, Louisiana who fought the cable companies and actually uh, the cable companies fought them but in order to have the right to make internet access available for all of their residents at reasonable prices and uh, some of the Silicon Valley companies are moving to Lafayette specifically because of the internet service that's provided 100 megabyte download speed and uh, significantly higher upload speed. So that's what the book is about and, and in the book uh, Captured Audience in that book she also points out Americans that have no internet service at all and in order to do their schoolwork have to go to a local library or, or McDonald's well guys, here's some fun. My uh, camera apparently uh, can only do about 10 minutes and then it shuts off when I'm recording and I hadn't realized that. So I was working on the blog telling you about uh, Susan Crawford's book and it ended. So this is just kind of an ending. I'll put links in the below, uh, below for you to find uh, Susan's book at uh, Amazon, both the Kindle version for I think it's $14.99, the uh, hardcover version is uh, only about twenty twenty two dollars if you're interested in that or you might find it in your local library uh, it's been out for over a year I believe and uh, I'll, I'll also put uh, if you can't afford the book but you're still interested in the subject uh, Susan Crawford's got a blog and I'll put uh, a description there and she covers a lot of the same thing uh, about the internet and internet inequality uh, the number of people who don't have access to the internet or have limited access to the internet mostly because of financial reasons and because uh, we view the internet as a luxury item instead of as the utility that it really has become. Thank you for watching. This is the Sunday Vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll subscribe and like it and you'll 
you'll share it with your friends so they find out about uh, Susan's book and uh, think a little bit more about the inequality of the internet not just as far as the people here inside the United States goes but as far as cities being able to make internet services available to all residents and as far as uh, fiber optics going in which is which is just a it's just uh, it's just a mess uh, trying to get fiber optics in when the cable companies had promised years ago that that's what they were going to do they're just they're just not they're just not doing it and there doesn't seem to be any oversight making them do it um, so I'll leave the links in below thanks again for watching and until next time as always this is Zen saying you be well I'll see you Wednesday.